Good morning, family. This is Ricky, and welcome to Hope for Today. Happy Wednesday, everybody. We continue on in Navigating Conflict Week at Hope for Today. 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 <laughs> I, I have issues. Pray for me. It is what it is. Guys, we're talking about, especially miss this holiday season, how to steward our relationships in a way that will be pleasing unto God and beneficial unto man. And we're in Matthew 18, which is all about navigating relationships, particularly when relationships go wrong. We're going to do yesterday's verse again yesterday, where Jesus says in verse 15, if your brother sins against you, Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. Now, Jesus here is again saying when stuff happens, don't sit on it. Don't hold it. Don't just stew and 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 and, and fume and, and not deal with it. Jesus says, go and tell him. That was about yesterday. Today, though, I want to talk about how you show up when you go. Because one thing I've learned in culture today, in this crazy postmodern, you know, I don't know. Um, we, we have lost the art of a good apology. We have lost the art of a good apology. I think about my kids. My kids are eight, six, and four, and they're prideful. <laughs> and, you know, they'll do something. This one will hit that one. This one will, you know, steal that one's candy. This one will, you know, get this one's remote control. So me and April's life is forcing children to apologize a thousand and four hundred and thirty eight times a day. Like, it's what we do. Apologies, really. And in the Jenkins house, we don't actually do apologies. We do forgiveness. And when they say, I'm sorry, we say, what do we say in the Jenkins house? We say, I'm sorry, will you please forgive me? So it's a whole thing. Another story for another time. But to see the contempt and the lack of vulnerability and sincerity on a kid who's going through the motions of apology instead of settling in the emotions of apology. And I want to talk about how we've lost that and of a lot of us, when we do show up to seek forgiveness or to forgive someone else or to have the conversation, we just don't know how to have it. So I thought I'd give us a little context and a few rules. I love what one of our founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin said, look at this, this is really cool. Uh, he said, uh, I'm scrolling to it where it is. He said, never ruin an apology with an excuse. Never ruin an apology with an excuse. Here's another one. Apologies aren't meant to change the past. They're meant to change the future. And here's a fun one I like. An apology is the super glue of life. It can repair just about anything. Did you know that if sin has happened, if junk has happened, and if you're willing to just show up because you care more about the relationship than about the burn that happened, that you just showing up with that vulnerability. Just think about what happens in you when someone sincerely asks for your forgiveness or apologizes. It literally takes the thing away. And you have the power to do that when you own your stuff. Go to that person and show up in the right way. So, a couple of uh, clarity things. One is um, when you show up to apologize, it's a time to listen as well as a time to speak. It is a time to listen as well as a time to speak. And if you're the one who needs to do the apologizing, it's often very wise for you to shut up and let them air out all their stuff, even though that's hard to hear because you're blessing them by them venting that and letting go of that. And you said, I'm so sorry for that. So it's good to listen as well as speak. Number two, as Benjamin Franklin said, kill the word if. Don't do this Western civilization apologies. I'm so sorry if that hurt you. Man, I apologize if you were upset by what I said. Man, I apologize if you felt if you felt that way. That's not an apology. That's like that's like you you really sorry that you feel awkward. That's not a true and real apology. So kill the word if. Thirdly and finally, okay, and this is most important. Give people time to heal. Just because you have the conversation and just because you're sincere doesn't mean that person is ready to let it go, and that's okay. You trust God with them now that you've trusted God with your response to them and let God do what only God can do and heal them fully and don't get mad at them because they aren't over it yet. Does that make sense? Ricky, this seems like hard, like it's real hard. It is hard. That's why we gotta ask Jesus, help me to do this in a way pleasing unto you. It's Navigating Conflicts Week. I hope you come back for more tomorrow. But for now, that's hope for today. I'll see you next time.